Hello and welcome to Run Testers, my name's Nick and this is our full review of the Puma Velocity Nitro 3. So the Velocity Nitro is a long-term favourite of ours here at the Run Testers. It is a mid-level, pretty good value, mid-cushion shoe designed to do a bit, a little bit of everything, and it's been one that I in particular have liked a lot over the past few years with Velocity Nitro 1 and 2. The new version of the shoe is slightly more expensive than previous models. It's £110 or $130. It weighs in at 283 grams or 10 ounces, which is a slight upticking weight on the Velocity Nitro 2, which is down to the fact that the stack height has slightly increased with the new shoe. It now stands 36 millimetres tall at the heel and 26 at the forefoot with a 10 millimeter drop. You've still got a dual density midsole setup with the top layer being Puma's Nitro Foam, which is nitrogen infused TPEE. And then the bottom layer is an EVA foam for Pro Foam Lite, which is a little bit firmer, denser than the stuff on the top, which is a bouncy, super critical foam. You've got a mesh upper on the Velocity Nitro 3, and Puma has added some of its power tape into the third version of the shoe, which just adds a little bit more structure and support to the shoe. Got loads of padding around the heel and tongue of the shoe. The uh, heel has been redesigned slightly to, I think, cradle the Achilles a bit more from the sides as a opposed to padding it right behind the foot there. There's some reflective elements on there as well to add a bit more visibility in nighttime running. And you've got a Puma Grip outsole again, as with the first two versions of the shoe, but the pattern has been redesigned a little bit to create good grip. I mean, it's a fantastic outsole Puma Grip. We've talked about it on pretty much all of Puma shoes, and it's still very good with the Velocity Nitro 3. So fit for me on the Velocity Nitro 3 has been generally good overall. I've had mine in the UK size 8, that's exactly the same size I've got the Velocity Nitro 2 in, and that was the size I had the original Velocity Nitro in as well too. As I mentioned in the first video, it is a shoe that does feel like it runs a little bit long, and I would say the space up front of the toes is pretty liberal. So there may be an argument to go half a size down in the shoe. Ultimately, on the run, it hasn't been an issue for me in terms of feeling too long and feel like you've got too much space up front there. So for me, I would still probably go for my usual size and the Velocity Nitro and in Puma shoes in general. Elsewhere, I mean, no real complaints here. Obviously, you're losing that more relaxed kind of upper fit that you're getting on the Velocity Nitro 2 for something more structured and kind of hold your foot in a little bit more. The laces have changed a little bit maybe on the long side but ultimately i think these laces do offer a better kind of lockdown in terms of what we got on the velocity nitro 2 and so if you look at the padding around the heel collar i think the design has changed but ultimately the level of padding hasn't so if you are familiar with using the velocity nitro 2 and what it's like in terms of the feel around the heel then you're getting i think something similar on the velocity nitro 3. so yeah for me fit wise absolutely fine as i said it does feel like it runs a little bit long but it hasn't been an issue ultimately when I've been out running and my UK size 8. The fit for me in the Puma Velocity Nitro 3, I'm a size 8 in the UK, this is a size 8. Very comfortable shoe, uh, I definitely stay to my size, it's very plush, um, is a lot of room in the shoe as well. Um, I Yeah, I definitely stay to my size in the shoe, I think it's very comfortable and it would suit a lot of people. So the fit for me in the Velocity Nitro 3 has been good for me in my normal running shoe size, it's the same size I've had with the past two models of the shoe and across Puma's range in general. It's a good amount of room in the toe box, nice, secure and very close hold at the heel. I think I prefer the way the heel is designed on the third version of the shoe, the way it almost pads from the side of your Achilles rather than being directly on it, which was a little bit the case with the Velocity Nitro 2, but yeah, a little minor improvement there. There's still lots of padding at the back of the shoe, which does soak up sweat a little bit and and in general, it's not the most breathable upper out there. This is something that's never bothered me, but I know with the Velocity Nitro 2, some people did find the upper quite warm. I think that's probably still going to be the case with the Velocity Nitro 3. Like I say, it hasn't really been a problem for me, and all round, I think the fit is very good in my normal running shoe size. The Puma Velocity Nitro range is uh, a range that we talk about a lot on the channel. Uh, Nick is obviously a big fan, but we're all big fans of that line. Um, and the new Puma Velocity Nitro 3 is much of the same. It's still a very solid, reliable, daily shoe that really does the job when you need it. Um, when you compare it with a lot of other shoes out there, a lot of the daily shoes out there, um, it really stacks up against them, and that's great because it's still cheaper than most of the alternatives that you can get of this caliber. When we've done reviews of the older shoes in the past, we've always said that they always compete pretty much with shoes that are 50 pounds, 60 pounds more expensive than it. And it's still the case. It's still, it's a little bit more expensive than the, uh, the previous version, but not a lot. And it's still just a great shoe. I've probably done about 80, 90 K in this so far. So I've basically been exclusively using this for all of my easy runs over the past 
uh, three or four weeks. And I've just, it's fantastic. It just does the job. Um, it's very comfortable. I do think it's a very tiny bit softer than the previous version. And as a result, I think it loses a little bit of responsiveness uh, over the run. It's not massive. And for the sort of runs that I've been doing in it, which should vary between uh, five minute, 30 minute kilometers to about four minute, 30 minute kilometers, it's absolutely fine. I've done a couple of quite tasty uh, tempo sessions in this shoe and I've done intervals in this shoe as well. Um, and it can hold up pretty well. It's not a fast shoe. It's not um, going to compete with something like the Sockling Dolphin Speed 3, but it's still a, a great all-rounder. It, it can do a lot of stuff. And if you were just going to pick up one pair of shoes, you didn't want to spend too much on it uh, and you wanted to do your easy runs, your daily runs, and maybe even go a bit faster in it, it's still a great option. It's, it's a lot going for this shoe and I'm glad that Puma haven't have made any massive differences to this shoe. There are some minor changes across it but ultimately it's delivering the same things you expect from the uh, Velocity Nitro 1 and 2. Um, some of the nice things about it, the upper nicely reinforced, very comfortable, there's a lot of padding on, you wouldn't notice that when you're running in it, it feels like a shoe that despite being a bit of a leaner daily shoe, it does feel very comfortable, there's a lot of plushness to it. Outsole, Fantastic still, the Puma Grip is still one of the best you can find on any shoes. Uh, definitely a shoe that you could probably use on lighter trails and stuff as well if you wanted to. But all in all, it's still a fantastic shoe and well worth buying if you want a good value all-rounder. Or just a shoe that you put in your bag for all of those runs where you're not sure what you really want to do with it. So I've done around 50k of running in the Puma Velocity Nitro 3, using it for a nice mix of training runs. Yeah, I've done a long run in the shoe. I've gone down to some very easy paces for short runs or warm-ups and cool downs before and after workouts. And done some faster stuff too, generally just progression runs moving through to around my steady pace, kind of top end of race paces uh, during general training. And... I really like it. Like, I really like the Puma Velocity Nitro 2, as anyone who's watched the channel for a while will know, and I really like the Puma Velocity Nitro 3. Don't think there's a massive change here from what Puma has done before with the line, so something we'll come on to in the verdict. Maybe you can look at getting the Velocity Nitro 2 in a deal now, but the Velocity Nitro 3 is certainly a delight to run in. So I have praised the Velocity Nitro 2 a lot over the past year, and I do think that sometimes that leads to people expecting something you know, really wow when they put the shoe on and go running in it, but that's not really why I like the shoe, and it's not why I like the Velocity Nitro 3. It's, it's not a really soft or springy ride or incredibly dynamic or exciting underfoot it's just really well balanced and just very pleasant to run in at almost any pace it just feels really nice to tick over and run in the shoe and it's great for racking up miles as a result you know it is soft and cushioned but it's not a massive high stack shoe or something that feels wobbly underfoot to me and it is pretty quick if you want to up the pace you've got the good foams there the nice balance of foams that create that smooth and fast ride and all around it just feels like a classic trainer <laughs> of this type which you can just pull on for a bit of anything really and it's always going to deliver a pretty good performance so obviously everything's quite individual it's the drop and the midsole foams to me that just really make it work for me like I said, it feels very natural on the foot you pull it on and i just forget about it and then go and tick along at whatever pace i'm planning to do that day like even with a 10 millimeter drop it doesn't feel like a very snappy or harsh ride as well i think the foams are really well set up to smoothly push you onto the forefoot and get a nice bit of response from the nitro foam which is obviously here in slightly higher amounts compared to previous models of the shoe just because you've got a slightly higher stack height but I don't think it's you know, delivering a, like I say a big explosive ride or anything like that it's just a really well balanced setup all round and I'm quite pleased that Puma kept the EVA foam underneath because you know I don't know exactly what it is that makes a shoe feel so good on the foot but maybe you'd have expected them to put a full nitro midsole foam in like you have on something like the Puma Magnify Nitro 2 which I do like and if you've got a foam that you generally consider better than the other foam you think well if I just make the whole midsole out of that it will feel better but actually a dual density setup like this I do think works quite well for lots of shoes because you do get that bouncier top layer then that you sink into a little bit and then you get a little bit of extra response by hitting the firmer bottom layer and then all in all it works really well it's the same with a shoe like the mac 5 which has a dual density setup as well and yeah it just feels like i say really nice for running in at almost any pace like i wouldn't go down necessarily and do all out track work in this shoe i think it can handle intervals pretty well but as someone with running shoe rotation i'd always have a faster shoe lined up to do that kind of thing in but you know broadly speaking any run up to that point feels really good in this shoe and it's got the comfort there for those very relaxed long runs as well despite the fact it's not completely maxed out like a lot of max cushion shoes on the market the stack right here is still pretty high and i certainly found it really comfortable on the long run i did in it and on top of all the stuff about how much i enjoy the ride you've got that really good puma grip outsole which we've talked a lot about with lots of puma shoes but it's worth reiterating again that this is a very good outsole like up there with my favorites uh, along with like adidas's continental rubber outsoles that just means you can pull the shoe on and head out 
fully confident that you're not going to slip on a pavement around here like during the winter when it gets very wet or greasy or there's a little bit of ice on the pavement at times that kind of thing just a very good outsole for that reliable on cambered pavements makes it a very practical shoe uh, which isn't always the case with sometimes you know the really exciting daily trainers or super trains that are coming out they're great if you hit a nice flat stretch of uh, asphalt and you have no concerns about turning or grip but with a real world use an outsole like this really is handy it does mean also i can just go into my local forest you know, pretty confident that i'm going to have quite good grip on light trails as well without having to worry about that so all around just a really accomplished uh, daily trainer so i've now clocked up 45k in the puma velocity nitro 3 now in our first round video i used it for my kind of long run and what i wanted to see post that video was how it would handle some more up tempo running ultimately because i could see it had enough in its kind of you know locker to handle longer runs and i feel like maybe it does work a bit better for longer runs, I think particularly in terms of what the changes in the upper, giving you a bit more structure, a bit more support on those longer runs as well too. But what ultimately what I wanted to see, if it still had that versatility that I think we really valued in the original Velocity Nitro and Velocity Nitro 2. So the runs that I did kind of post that were more close to my kind of more up-tempo pace, more my kind of quicker pace, dropping down to kind of seven minute, seven minute 20, seven minute 30 minute mile pace, which is kind of my more up-tempo pace. And I'm happy to say that the shoe does still run really well at those slightly quicker paces. Now, I think in terms of using it for kind of speed sessions, track sessions, it probably isn't the shoe that I would grab for, for those. But I think if I wanted a shoe where I do want to do kind of tempo style runs, if I wanted to see some kind of progression stuff, then I do think this is a shoe that can handle that. It has jumped up a little bit in weight, but I don't think it's the kind of weight that makes a massive difference in terms of the experience of what you get from the Velocity Nitro 3 compared to its predecessor and also the original Velocity Nitro. I think, you know, when you what you get from that midsole is something that is responsive and nice responsive. It isn't super soft, but there is enough of that softness to make sure that you're getting some comfort there as well too. I do just feel like you can go out, you can run, it feels good, it feels consistent, it feels smooth, and it just doesn't feel like a jarring experience to run in the Velocity Nitro 3 overall. What I also like is the outsole is really solid as well too. It's something that we've kind of highlighted in previous Velocity Nitro shoes, Puma shoes in general. You've got a lot of rubber here. Ultimately, from a gripping point of view, I haven't had to run in kind of wet conditions, but Ultimately, it's not changed massively in terms of what we see in the Velocity Nitro 2 and the original. I think you're getting a good level of grip here. And I think if you wanted to run on lighter trails, I think this is a shoe that's absolutely capable of doing it. So for me, as I said, on that first run, which was kind of a longer run, what I wanted to see is whether it had kind of better capabilities in terms of support, in terms of the protection that you're getting, which I think maybe you do get on the original Velocity Nitro 2. But I think here, the changes make it a bit better suited to those longer runs. What I wanted to see is whether it retained, as I said, those that capability to run more up-tempo in this. As I said, I don't think it's for speed sessions or kind of track sessions, but I think if you wanted to run a little bit quicker and have a shoe that you can ease off in as well too, this is a shoe that does it. It gives you a good, versatile ride. I think you're getting a really strong outsole as well here too. And while I actually didn't mind the upper on the Velocity Nitro 2, I can appreciate what Puma has done here in terms of offering something that's a bit more supportive, a bit more structured, and as I said, gives it a bit more scope to be better suited for longer runs as well too. So all real positives for me on the Velocity Nitro 3. You know, I was a little bit disappointed it has gone up a little bit in weight, but ultimately the experience overall hasn't changed. The types of runs it's designed for, it still feels well suited. So yeah, all very positive for me on the Velocity Nitro 3. So my verdict is that the Velocity Nitro 3 is another really excellent shoe within the Velocity Nitro lineup. It's not had big changes from the previous models of the shoe, and for me that is a plus. It's the embodiment really of this mid-level, mid-cushion trainer that's not got a maxed out stack. It isn't the really expensive neutral trainer in a brand's lineup. It's essentially the, the Nike Pegasus of old, which was just a do-it-all shoe that suited loads of different runners really well and just did everything well it was a practical shoe you could pull on and go out and do your running it really quite reliably and you'd happily recommend it to friends knowing that they'd probably get on with the shoe quite well and that's what the velocity nitro is for me and it does it all at a good price that's slightly lower than most of the shoes in this bracket so even with the price going up this year it's still really good value it's also always a shoe that seems to crop up in sales and that's something to look out for in the future as I mentioned in the run test, I don't think there's a huge change here to the Velocity Nitro 2, even with a little bit of extra stack height. I'd say if you can find the older shoe at a really good deal, I'd probably be tempted to pick that up and make a bit more of a save and get even more value out of it. But maybe over time, that extra stack height might come into play a little bit in retaining the feel of the midsole over longer miles, though I never had a problem with that with the Velocity Nitro 2 either. So other competition in this area, 
A couple that stand out from Adidas and Nike is obviously the Nike Pegasus and then the Adidas Supernova Rise. Both of these are pretty good shoes as well. Fairly versatile, reasonably good value. I just prefer the feel of the Velocity Nitro myself. It's also a bit cheaper. You've got a better outsole. I find it just more comfortable than the Adidas Supernova Rise and I think it's a lot more versatile than the Pegasus which has strayed more into full cushion shoe territory in recent years for me. Socony Ride 17 is another very well cushioned shoe. I think the previous models of the Ride were probably a bit more lightweight and similarly versatile to the Velocity Nitro 3, but the new version is a bit more like a Triumph. I find it just a bit heavy and big to go and do faster runs in. I'd much prefer to do those in the Velocity Nitro, but the Ride 17 is a good cushion daily trainer that probably has a little bit more comfort maybe but i prefer the feel of velocity nitro 3 myself and find it more than comfortable enough the hoka clifton 9 is another solid alternative for those who would like a lower drop i think that is a really good shoe that does do a little bit of everything quite well midsole foam is not the most impressive i find with hoka in general it's a shoe that i think relies a lot more on the rocker geometry to create a nice smooth ride i think the puma has better foams in the midsole again a better outsole again slightly cheaper but hoka is a really good shoe like i did enjoy using that for a nice range of runs but I'd probably prefer the feeling of the Puma myself with the higher drop you have here. And then the Asics Nova Blast 4 is a really strong competitor. It's a shoe I've really enjoyed using of late, and I'd use it for all the same kind of runs as I would use the Puma Velocity Nitro uh, 4. Got a higher stack on the Asics, probably slightly more balanced to the way it's set up as well, and it's not that much more expensive. So I think that is quite a tight one. Again, you get a better outsole here on the Puma. It is cheaper uh, in the UK in particular. But in terms of the actual ride feel, I think they are quite close in how much I like them. They're both really good, versatile daily training shoes. Probably I'd stick to the Puma just again because that outsole is so good, but... Yeah, that's a good option as well, the Asics Nova Blast, if you want slightly more stack and a slightly more bouncy feeling underfoot on your everyday runs. So my verdict on the Puma Velocity Nitro 3 is a pretty easy one. It's still a great shoe. It's not massively changed from the earlier versions. Um, it's maybe for me just a tiny bit softer than the earlier versions, but not massively. It's not going to change the, the ride enormously. You're probably not going to notice that, that much. So it's still a great option if you just want a great value shoe that is punches far far above its weight you're not going to be massively surprised by this shoe if you've used the velocity one and two you're not going to get this and find that it's an amazing update to those versions it's just a slightly tweaked version of those and is slightly better in some respects um so well worth a look if you want a good solid daily shoe that can do easy runs and can do slightly faster sessions as well but yeah definitely still one of the the best value options out there um, if you're looking for a good solid daily shoe. So my verdict on the Puma Velocity Nitro 3 is that this is once again a very versatile cushioned daily trainer shoe at a very good price. While there are some changes here, I think ultimately the essence of the shoe remains the same as the first two shoes. And I think that's really important here. And I think, you know, if you want a shoe that can handle some slower, longer runs, but also allows you to run a little bit more tempo in it and you're getting something that works well from that point of view, then this is one of the best out there. And as I said, it is at a very good price and I wouldn't be surprised if it gets lower than it's going to retail price and it will make it even better value. I think in terms of the changes from the Velocity Nitro 2, I think it maybe is a little bit better suited to those longer runs because of those upper changes. I think you're getting maybe a little bit more in the heel in terms of protection, but ultimately I don't think there's a massive amount in it. Now, if it was me, I would still be going for the Puma Velocity Nitro 2, particularly if you can pick it up for a lot less than Velocity Nitro 3, which is also already still pretty cheap when you think about what you're getting in terms of experience. But I don't mind the kind of more relaxed upper that you're getting here. It is a little bit lighter and you're getting a good outsole on that shoe as well too. And generally, as I said, the same types of runs it's going to excel at as well too. The only other shoe that I think sits in this profile at a similar price as I mentioned in the first video, it's a Saucony Axon 3. That's a shoe that I think really works in a similar fashion to the Puma Velocity Nitro 3. That is a little bit harder to get hold of at the moment. So I think I would still probably be veering towards the Puma Velocity Nitro 3. I think the midsole just feels a little bit nicer. It looks a little bit better, although I don't absolutely love this colorway. So I'm hoping there'll be some better colorways that uh, Puma launches the Velocity Nitro 3 in. But ultimately, I think the experience for me just works a little bit better for me and i think if you've got kind of a hundred pounds 110 pounds to pay or to play with then this is a shoe that i think about getting don't judge this shoe on the price just because it's less than some other cushion daily training shoes this is a standout shoe irrespective of the price and i think if you as i said if you're looking for a versatile daily trainer cushion shoe obviously nitro 3 is one of the best you can get if you don't mind having something that has that kind of more structured supportive upper I would go for the Velocity Nitro 2. That's still a great shoe that offers a similar ride and experience overall. But yeah, Velocity Nitro 3, another solid iteration of the Velocity Nitro line and I think will remain a really popular shoe for a lot of people and still a popular shoe and a well-loved shoe for us here too.
Okie dokie, that is our review of the Puma Velocity Nitro 3. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Please do like and subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.